Hello and welcome to a special super LGBTQ plus over analysis of Ryan Murphy's 2020 musical film The Prom. If you have not seen The Prom, probably best to do that first before watching this as this video may contain spoilers. Now I've not done a video of this nature, but while I was watching this glorious film, I noticed quite a few things. Were they signs of Ryan Murphy lacing subtle LGBTQ plus inclusivity nods into this film? Were these mere coincidences? Or is this all just one film lover reading way too much that doesn't exist into a film for her own gain? Who can say? But I like to imagine that Ryan Murphy filled this film with gay pride for everyone and so I'm sticking with that. But if we break this down logically, I'm probably full of shit and just have an incredibly overactive imagination, but on to the subject at hand. As I was watching this film, I noticed what I believe to be nods to the various flags of the LGBTQ plus community scattered throughout the film, represented in the costumes, sets, and of course cinematography, which is outstanding by the way. So let's go through what I noticed and then you can laugh that maybe I just have too much time on my hands or someone is spiking my water. First, we open with a PTA meeting where Kerry Washington plays the head of the PTA, which stands for Parents Traumatizing Adolescents, where they have decided to cancel the prom. Legally, they couldn't ban gay children from attending, so they got rid of it altogether because logic. So far, nothing of interest in this scene. Cut forward a few seconds and we get our first glimpse of an ongoing theme used in the film. Throughout the film, Washington is dressed in clothes in shades of soft pink or lilac. Pink is stereotypically a feminine colour. Her character is very rigid, wanting children children to wear clothes and colours assigned to their gender and well we know how she feels about gay kids so it's interesting that this part of her personality is shown through her clothes. As we go along we'll see she only ever deviates from her designated gender colour when it plays into the story narrative. Cut to us being introduced to the bright lights of Broadway and our Broadway stars but hang on a second, what is this? The banner for Eleanor, the Eleanor Roosevelt musical, is represented by the bisexual flag colours. Now, of course, as we go on, we see these colours are present throughout the film a lot. Here we see part of the musical number Changing Lives, where we see a depiction of the Eleanor musical. And of course, the costume sets and the cinematography are all in shades of blue, pink and purple. The most used colours of this film are neon pink, blue, purple and green. I mean, just look at the title. Now you'll definitely find all these colours in the LGBT pride flag, more specifically the original 1977 pride flag which had eight colours, not six. In the original pride flag we had pink which represented sexuality, red which stood for life, orange for healing, yellow for sunlight, green for nature, turquoise for magic, indigo blue for serenity and purple for spirit. Throughout the film, you see these colours used very boldly in sets and costumes, with characters often wearing very bold, solid colours, which always makes each character stand out. Do the choices of colour in set and costume have anything to do with the pride flag, or is this all just me reading far too much into this? But let us continue. When I said the most used colours, out of the four I mentioned, the most used of those are blue and pink. Here is my theory. Since blue is stereotypically masculine and pink is feminine, I notice that these two colours are always present on the screen at the same time in some form or another. My theory, which tells you I have too much time available to me, is that it's a way of breaking down gender stereotypes, putting the masculine and the feminine on an equal playing field, showing they are two halves of a whole, so throughout the film they are always depicted together. This is my theory and I think it's fun to view it this way, even though it's probably just that these two colours look great together and really stand out in a gay musical film, but let's continue with the theories, shall we? Ah, here we have Kerry Washington, again in her gender assigned pink, which looks lovely against her skin regardless. Note again, blue and pink in the same shot. Moving on to Meryl's big number, it's not about me, come on would you just look at the lighting, but skip to the next shot. While again in the background we have pink and blue, focus on what's going on up front. Red, blue, black and gold jewellery for Meryl. Well, I'll be damned if those aren't the colours of the polyamory flag, down to the gold accent to represent yellow. Of course those colours look fabulous together and they catch your attention, but isn't it more fun to think a pride flag was being represented? I sure do. Oh, look at these lovely young actresses singing dance with you hand in hand with the shades of pink and orange and red and yellow and white and... Hang on a minute, those are the colours of the lesbian flag! Gasp! Two lesbian characters being showcased in the very colours of their pride flag? Come on now, what are the chances? Here we have the bus our celebrities are travelling in. Notice the colours? Hang on, let's get a better shot from later in the film. Ah, there we go. Yep, there's that pink, purple and blue again. Woo! 
bisexual pride. Did you know that these colors are also featured in the omnisexual, that's me, and gender fluid flags? Now these flags I don't think are ever specifically depicted, but they both do have those shades in them, so let's take it, shall we? See? Pink and blue again. You can't escape it. Okay, you want to see me really stretch these theories? You're on. Here we have monster trucks, yeah! I see many shades of grey and green and black. Did you know these are the colours of the agender and aromantic flags? True story, I know. I'm blowing your mind right now and I ain't even done. Now we have the aptly named The Acceptance Song, which no one really wants to accept exists, but boy was it amusing and served a purpose. But ignore the star-spangled jacket and focus on the gospel singers. Note the bandanas. Each person is wearing a bandana with a colour depicted on the pride flag. Want to make it more special? Let's focus on the one on the far right. This person has brown. Wait, brown isn't on the pride flag. Ah, but yes it is, my little viewers. In more recent years, the pride flag has added the colours brown and black. Black for diversity and brown for inclusivity to represent the struggles LGBTQ plus people of colour face and show that these people matter. These are some pretty inclusive bandanas. While the school's colours are yellow and blue, notice how his number is in pink? We just can't escape blue and pink. I told you, almost always present and together. During the You Happen number, again we have Joellen Palman and Ariana DeBose rocking the masculine and feminine colours, but it's a bit more than that. Did you know blue, pink and white are the colours of the trans pride flag? I'm sure by the start of this you thought I was totally nuts, but now you might just be thinking there is some reason to my madness, but I'm not done yet. Whoop, lilac time, how daring. Do I even have to say it? I'm not crazy, guys. Say what you want, but a gay man is shopping for a lesbian and the first shoes he picks just so happen to resemble the lesbian flag. This is getting nuts. Ooh, look at Washington with her bold pink fuchsia if you're nasty. what I say? You think department stores know what to grab off the rack when she walks in? Oh, hello, Mrs. Green. Let me guess, something in pink. All this pink and blue makes me want a raspberry blueberry frozen slurpee. Anyone else want one? Oh, yay, a break from the blue and pink. Okay, yellow and purple. Nothing special The holy moly, those are the colours of the intersex flag. Is there anything they didn't think of? If we wanted to, we could push this a little. She is technically wearing yellow, purple, black, and she is white. So does this count also as the non-binary flag? Eh, who cares, I'm taking it anyway. Non-binary matters too, goddammit. There's that pink and blue again, but wait, now we've added yellow. Could, could it be the pansexual flag? The colour plot thickens. Over here we have some green and purple and white, also known as the genderqueer flag, and funny enough is also the colours of the suffragettes flag designed in 1908. Thanks for those voting rights, ladies. I used my voting rights to vote for marriage equality. <laughs> I bet they'd have hated that. <laughs> Alyssa kind of takes after her mother, but I'm sure she is forced to wear pink a lot. But let's zoom in on the collar. She's rocking the brown and black of the new pride flag, even in the same pattern. Is this her way of saying, I want to be a proud gay black woman? Sing it, Alyssa. Blasphemy. Mrs. Green is wearing blue. Were the fairy godmothers getting into a color war again? The only time we see her wearing a colour that goes against her gender stereotype is actually as her daughter sings the song Alyssa Green. In it, she is singing about her mother's strict and controlling ways. She also mentions about how she feels her mother is this way as a result of her husband leaving them. Perhaps in this moment, the blue is representing how Mrs. Green has had to be both the mother and father, something Alyssa clearly acknowledges. It's also the only time we see Alyssa wearing blue outside of her cheerleading uniform. While this number also showcases several pride flags, including, to a degree, the polysexual flag. Wonder how much these lights cost the school. <gasps> pride flag coloured juices. Pansexual. It's literally everywhere. Do you think maybe the fountain is lit with green because on the pride flag green stands for nature and Trent is singing and trying to teach these children that being gay is natural? <laughs> oh please, even I know this one is an epic reach, but you got to admit it sounds good. Fane's shock. Pansexual again. Ah! but let's get another glance at these tables from another angle. Hmm. It seems actually like all the tables have every colour of the rainbow. How about that? This is actually very sweet. This is the only time you will see all these characters together in neutral colours. It's as if in this moment they have stripped away everything. The walls are down, the personas are gone, and they are all just being people together in a moment. This was very sweet. Can we just 
stop to appreciate Nicole Kidman in this scene. She was giving the best background performance of everyone in this moment. She was pulling the best faces. I'm trying to focus on this daughter coming out to her mother and I keep looking over to see Nicole's reactions. It was awesome. Ah, uh, blue and pink in perfect harmony. Hmm, if you weren't sure that Mrs. Green has had a turnaround, her outfit should give it away. This is her most bold fashion piece of the entire film. Nothing gender specific, it's fun, it's bright, it's inviting. This one outfit says a lot about the character's change of heart and mental stance. She's breaking away from conforming norms and is breaking free. Gotta love it. It's not every colour of the pride flag, but good enough. Eee, pride neon lights. And a room full of every gender and sexuality decked out in the colours that honour them. It's 100% a celebration of love, acceptance and happiness. But blue and pink still dominate that scene. You can say this entire video was either fun or a waste of time. Maybe I noticed some intentional nods to LGBTQ plus pride, or maybe I just saw what I wanted to see because I was watching a film about self-acceptance, fighting for equality, overcoming adversity, and finding happiness embracing all of who you are. Pride or no pride, this was an awesome movie with incredible sets, costumes, cinematography, and more. The music and vocal performances were sublime. Meryl has clearly taken some extra singing lessons since Mamma Mia because her range has improved. She was able to hold her notes far better, whereas in Mamma Mia she sounded strained a lot. But then again, it was ABBA songs. There were some questionable moments here and there, but I think they all smoothed out and everything ended on a high. I adored this film. I adored the music and performances. Ryan Murphy has nailed the fuck out of this film. And I just realized I don't have the soundtrack and I must go and fix this right now. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it fun and maybe just a bit educational. Comment below with your thoughts on the prom if you have seen it. Thank you as always to my patrons. That's it for this video and I shall catch you in the next one. See you at Mardi Gras.